Hmm. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon and Flat Earth Homeland. Um, this has been extremely frustrating. I'm having multiple problems at multiple levels with my equipment. What little I have. All right. Where I left off on that last one was that uh, my friend there, he said, you know, Jerry, we could, and this is about 10 o'clock at night, we talked to 5 in the morning, had to go to work at 7, both of us did, and uh, he said, you know, Jerry, we could sit here till the sun comes up and not be able to name or even remember the countries that we have destroyed. So, if you want to know more about that point in time and our wonderful government and what they do to people around the world and have been doing Watch the movie The Killing Fields. Uh, I think Sam Waterston played a reporter. Linda Hunt was in it, a little short lady. And um, S. something rang, played the doctor. But I, I'll never forget the scene where he comes to a river and you cameras may be a little out of focus. You think it's river rocks, boulders, and dried branches, and then it focuses in and you see that it's just like thousands upon thousands of skulls and in the museum there there's literally hundreds of skulls all stacked up neatly three months three million dead so one of the things I went off on a little rant there about flat earth what difference does it make well that wouldn't have happened and communism would not have existed because communism is based on atheism and atheism wouldn't have had the foundational book of Das Kapital, because Das Kapital came from Origin of the Species, which was an atheistic view of evolution, which Charles Darwin, that all happened because of the globe, because of God being dead and God no longer being a part of human existence, because the Bible was not true. So what difference does it make? It makes a hell of a difference. And it makes a difference as to what they're actually hiding, not only God, but the way the earth works and the energy that drives the earth. You know, I was walking along one day and uh, the words went through my mind, a uh, perpetual motion machine over unity, you know, free energy. And then, the, you know, like there's no such thing as an over unity device. There's no such thing as free energy. And I heard the words look up and I look up and the sun and the moon were both out. Of course, the moon reflects the sun, and the Earth's shadows cause the moon's phases, right? Yeah, here's the sun and the moon both in the sky overhead, and the moon's phases are clearly like one half phase, you know, quarter phase, half phase, new moon, in the sky at the same time as the sun, and it's the Earth's shadow. Uh-huh, rethink that one. Um, but I looked up, and I was like, wow, <laughs> perpetual motion, you know, free energy machine, and uh, we're going to go into that. We're going to go into that. So, back about the same time I wrote this book, I made the statement, the prediction, the uh, just not a prediction, not a prophecy per se, just a statement of fact, as I saw it, that we are going to go through paradigm shifts. We're going to go through a shift in our understanding of health and how we manage health, and in homes, building, construction, and how we build our homes, and a paradigm shift in energy from a closed uh, Newtonian, uh, everything's breaking down system to the idea of a Tesla-esque, if you will, a Teslonian, however you want to phrase it, a Nikola Tesla type of a world where there's free energy. Look up at the sky next time. Why is the sun still up there? Why is the moon still up there? They're working perfectly fine. They're working like clockwork. In fact, they are a clock. Hello. Um, so they're put up there for signs and seasons, days and years by the person that created them, and they are still functioning perfectly for the last close to 7,000 years or however, whatever your belief is on creation and whatnot. Um, they're still working just fine. They haven't broken down. We do not live. We do not live in a Newtonian, all things are breaking down, first and second and third law of thermodynamics, all things break down. Bullshit. 
That's what they're selling you is bullshit. So we're going to go into that. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. That's one of the reasons why I'm talking about the Ozark Plateau. Directly, directly linked to flat earth and that idea, that cosmology. Okay? Um, very, very critical. Life critical uh, for all of our futures. So, okay. Um, hmm. I, I, like I said, I'm gonna. If I'm repeating stuff, I'm so sorry. I did a hundred minutes of recording. I got through quite a bit of this article. Started to go back to listen to it, to upload it, and all I was hearing was <laughs> through all eight or ten of them. So I deleted them all. <sighs> so I don't know what I've said. I don't know what I haven't said. Um, which sucks. I, I have no idea where I'm at. I do know that when I finished that last section that I was just had said, I went back and listened to that. So, yeah. So, uh, whatever. Let's move along here. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. How to get out of Babylon.com ebook section one. Yes, that was my website for quite a few years. I kept it up uh, when I went through the divorce and. How to learn firsthand how to take care of homeless people by becoming a homeless people. <laughs> um, yesterday I couldn't spell the word now I are one. Yeah, I tried to, you know, for 16 long, lonely years, I was trying to figure out how to take care of a whole bunch of homeless people, and I guess I wasn't doing a good enough job of that because God knew I needed some firsthand experience. So here we are. Um, yeah, got a trader, you know, living in. I'm not destitute, I'm not dying. I am young. I was young. Now I'm old, and I have not seen the Lord's uh, people begging bread, or as righteous forsaken, or as people begging begging bread. Yeah, there you go. So, um, but so after all those years, I, I uh, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, this friend of mine said he'd take help me, and he had I don't know like two thousand dollars a month, you know, in retirement and Social Security and all this other stuff. I got nothing, zero, zip, nada. That's just the way I live my life. I'm not complaining. Um, I've not taken advantage of any kind of government thing, and I don't intend to begin now. But um, I thought, well, shoot, he'll be. He told me he's going to tithe. Told me he'd help me as long as I was doing God's work. I'm doing God's work. So I asked him if he would uh, pay for the website for a year. No. Okay. Well, you know. <laughs> Wasn't much of a tithe. Twenty bucks one time. That was it. Yeah, forty, whatever. So anyway, um, thank you for all the things that you did. And other than that, I won't mention your name because of the fact that there's the rich and the nameless. Lifestyles of the rich and nameless. So I'm not going to mention your name. If it was good, I would, but it's not, so I won't. So anyway. It is available on lulu.com. Uh, go to lulu.com, look up Jeremiah Elliott, two L's, two T's. It was my pen name back in 2001. I had no idea what was going to go on with the internet. Brand new to me. I was brand new to it anyway. And um, so Jeremiah Elliott, How to Get Out of Babylon. Free PDF download. Um, you can order a hard copy. They charge you what they charge you. I'm not making anything on it. Uh, nor, I could add five books on, so every time they print a book, I get five bucks. I have not done that. On my part, it's free, and it is free as a PDF. You can download it and read it tonight. So, How to Get Out of Babylon, Jeremiah Elliott. It's under other names, other titles. I guess I've left them up all these years. But anyway, so uh, you do yourself a favor by reading. It's only about 50 pages. It's not much more than an outline but it is a power-packed outline with ideas uh, flowing out of it and becoming reality more powerful and more clear and more deep and more broad every single day as time goes by. So, so take what you can, leave the rest as the old song goes. I'm right there. Seriously, I feel this is a solid, accurate, and highly predictive, historically-based 
feasibility study. And I've got a temperature warning on the phone, so it may shut off at any moment. Okay, Galen Chadwick, he founded the Well-Fed Neighbor Alliance. Our motto was, the best defense in hard times is a well-fed neighbor. Oh, I unplugged the charger. That's what it said. Forgot about that. Um, and the idea being that, you know, if, you're, if your neighbor is, is not hungry, he's not going to be coming to you for food. Okay? He's not going to come knocking on your door. He's not going to come to your door with a gun. And, uh, you know, and, he, and if he knows that he is getting his food from you because you're producing food, guess what? He is maybe of the opinion that he wants to help defend you. Best defense in hard times is a well-fed neighbor. Move to where people plan on feeding you, not where they plan on eating you. They may or may not shoot you first, but there is going to be rampant cannibalism in this country. That's going to be guaranteed by the powers that be who make sure that we eat a baby. They're putting human parts in food. And I believe that it will evolve or evince or event, whatever. It's going to turn into a cannibalism. One way or another, it's in everybody's mind. It's just, it's sick, perverted. But I think it's going to happen. <clears throat> Already has happened, has happened, and will continue to happen. All right, so Galen Chadwick said this it is high time for conservative. Organizations to champion and fund in every way possible the farmer patriot role model. This is the best, the last thing, and I would say the greatest thing we can do for ourselves, our children, and for their children. Galen Chadwick. To survive, we, our children, and our grandchildren must again become patriot farmers, family farmers. We must return to the land right now. There is no tomorrow. We can, we must take our country back one farm at a time. We must tell the truth until it sinks in. Food and freedom are linked at the individual level. We must relearn how to independently feed ourselves, sweat on a sweat, or we will perish. There is no other way to regain control of our future. And if necessary, to be able to defend our political sovereignty. Okay. Now, I want to stop there and make the point that Galen... Um, often would talk about the fact that in the animal kingdom, you are not, you know, an animal is not considered an adult until it can fend for itself, protect itself, defend itself, and feed itself, okay? Until that, those uh, conditions are in place, there is no possibility of that animal surviving very long in the wild. Okay, so let's fast forward that to today or apply it to our society, and most people are not adults. How many people do you know that can literally feed themselves off of what they produce? And I'm not talking going to the bank and making money or going to a construction job and making money and going to the Walmart and Aldi's and grocery store of whatever brand, make, um, and buy food. That is not producing food. I'm talking about if, if things broke down to the point that there was no food in the stores, and we all know that there's only three days worth of food available at any given time. If that system breaks down, not if, when that system breaks down, are you going to be able to produce enough food to feed yourself? I often ask people in the front range when we live there, I said, what is the largest protein source in the front range? And the funniest answer I got was one lady said, popcorn? Uh, well, the largest protein source in the front range is not rats, it's not cats, it's not dogs, it's people. Now, whatever, basically, you know, for all practical purposes. And I'm going to cut this off. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. If you're listening to this, you are the remnant.